Kumar. Now I am going to discuss one time response analysis of second rule system for a step input. As we know, uh, first let us try to understand the basic concept of time response analysis. Okay. As we know, in time response analysis, time is independent variable. So it is useful for designing and analysis of control system. In time response analysis, we give some standard input test signal like unit impulse, unit step, unit ramp, and we see the response of output with respect to time, or we see the variation of output with respect to time. This is nothing but time response of the system. From the time response analysis, the stability of system, the accuracy of system, or we say that means time, time rise time, peak time, overshoot, complete evolution of system can be studied very easily. So, time response analysis, there are two types of response for any system. First one is transient response. First one is transient response and second one is steady state response. Transient response, it is a part of response which goes to zero after a certain interval of time. Or we can say that in, in this response, the value of power force changes from one value to another value with respect to time. And the steady state response, it is a part of response which remains even after transient has died out. Or we can say that in this response, the response of output remains constant. Okay. So if we draw the response of any system, any general system, okay. So so if we see from this part means in general this is high top, okay, this is settling time. So for this for this for this period of response we see the response of output changes with respect to time. So this is the part of transient response. This is the part of transient response. And in this in this period of response, we see the output response is constant with respect to time. So this is a steady state response. So from the transient response analysis, from the transient response analysis, we can find out system have oscillation or not about its final value. So this is nothing but final value. This is CT with respect to time. So from the transient response analysis, we find system have oscillation or not about its final value, or we can find out the rise time, settling time peak time, if system have oscillation then uh, what is the maximum overshoot. Okay, and from the steady state response, we can see that that system have error or not. System have error or not. Like here, this is the part of error. So if from the steady state response, we can find out the system have error or not about its and desired value and actual value. So now we move on the um, time response analysis of second rule system for a state input. As we know, the, the general form of second order transfer function is nothing but Cs by Rs equal to omega n square by s square plus 2j omega n s plus omega n square. So here omega n is nothing but natural frequency of oscillation and j is nothing but damping damping ratio sorry and j omega n is nothing but damping factor. So if we give the step input means RT is nothing but UT. So its Laplace transform will be 1 by S. So its response Cs will be omega n square into rs 
by s square plus 2j omega n s plus omega n square. So now R s is 1 by s because we need the state response. So R s is 1 by s. So this series will be omega n square by s into s square plus 2j omega n s plus omega n square. Now, if we want to see the response of our Fourier time domain, first we find out the inverse Laplace transform of this response. So, we find out the inverse Laplace transform with the help of partial fraction. So, if we have a transfer function like this way, means this is the form of like c by s into s square plus a s plus b. So, if we have a transfer function like in this form c by s uh, into s square plus a s plus b, then we write in the partial fraction c by b into 1 by s minus s plus a by s square plus a s plus b. So, we can also write this transfer function in this way. So, here c and b is nothing but omega n square. So, we can write that omega n square by omega n square into 1 by s minus s plus a. a is nothing but 2j omega n. So, s plus 2j omega n by s square plus 2j omega n s plus omega n square. So this will be cancelled. So we can write also 1 by s minus s plus j omega n by s plus j omega n whole square plus omega d square. Omega d, omega d is nothing but omega n root under 1 minus j square. This is damp frequency of oscillation. So, we can write this dish term like in this way. If we solve this, this will become like same this s square plus j minus plus omega n square. And we can also write that this minus j omega n by s plus j omega n whole square plus omega d square. So, now if we see this, this term, so this is nothing but s by s plus s square plus omega d square. So, this is nothing but the Laplace transform of cos omega d. If we see here, this process factor, this is 1 by s plus omega s square plus omega d square. So, if we write here omega d, then this will be nothing but the plus transform of sin omega dt. So, we multiply here omega d, we multiply here by omega d and divide by omega d. So, we can also write this, this will be 1 by s minus s plus j omega n by s plus j omega n whole square plus omega d square minus j omega n by omega d and multiplied by omega d and divided by omega d. So this will be j omega n by omega d into omega d by s plus j omega n whole square plus omega d square. So omega d is nothing but omega n root under 1 minus j square. So if we put the value here, then this omega n and omega n will be cancelled. So if we put here omega d equal to omega n root under 1 minus j square, so this omega n and this omega n will be cancelled. So this 
response C S will be one by S minus S plus J omega n by S plus J omega n whole square plus omega D square minus omega n omega n is so this will be J by root under one minus J square into omega D by S plus J omega n whole square plus omega d square. So, this is the Laplace transform of cos omega d t and this is the Laplace transform of sin omega t. So, ct will be ct will be for 1 by s this will be ut so this will be ut minus this will be s by s square plus omega d square is the plus transform of cos omega d t so this will be cos D but here S plus J omega n. So for this, this will be what? E to the power minus J omega n t. So we got J omega n t into cos omega d t minus there will be same also. This will be J by root under 1 minus J square E to the power minus J omega n t sin omega dt u t here also this will be u t so we can also write this system 1 minus e to power minus j omega n t by root under 1 minus j square if we take common this e to power minus j omega n t by root under 1 minus j square so here this will be root under 1 minus j square cos omega dt plus here will be j sin omega dt So this will be the response of system. We can also write that we know that the j, j is nothing but cos phi, and cos phi is j. So this will be root under root under j is by nothing but sine phi. So this will be term of sine phi into cos omega d t plus cos phi into sine omega d t. So this is nothing but the numerical formula of sine j plus b. Sine j plus b is nothing but sine a into cos b plus cos a into sine b. So we can also write this for this factor sin a plus b. So this response will be ct. ct will be this ct will be 1 minus e to power minus j omega nt by root under 1 minus j square this will be sin a plus b so sin omega dt plus pa so this is the response of second order system for a stable in a stable board ok so if we see this one term so this is for a steady state this is response of this is nothing but a steady state response and this is this is the part of transient response this is the part of transient response ok so if we draw the response of uh, our code for a state input ct its response will be like this
Okay. So at t equal to zero, it has start from zero. How? If we put t equal to zero here, t equal to zero, this will be one by a root of one minus i square. This will be zero. Only there will be a sine phi. Okay. So if we put t equal to zero, if we put t equal to zero, so c of zero will be one minus one. If we put here zero, so this will be four minus zero. This will be nothing but one. So one by root under one minus i square. If we put equal to t equal to zero, so this will be zero. Zero plus phi phi, so sine phi only. There will be a sine phi, and we know that. Five. So we know that I can do nothing but sine inverse of under one minus j square. So we can also write this one minus one by root under one minus j square sine sine inverse root under one minus j square. So sine theta sine into sine inverse theta is nothing but theta. So this will be. One minus one by root under one minus j square into root under one minus j square. So this will be cancel one minus one. So this will be zero. So at t equal to zero, it start from zero. So we start from zero, and then this will be gradually decreasing because we know that sine theta is what one and minus one. So for this, this will be one or one. This will be one minus into one minus j square t. Root minus j square and for minus one, this will be one plus e to one minus j minus n t by root under one minus j square. Means it's this is for one minus root under e to one root sorry one minus e to power Minus j omega n t by root under one minus j square, and this is for one minus e to the minus j omega n t by root under one minus. Sorry, this will be one plus j square. So this is the response of uh, system. So the second order system for a step input. So here, if we see, this is the rise time, and this will be the peak time. Keep me. Rise time is nothing but it is a time. It is a time for which system reaches to its final value. So this is rise time, and peak time is nothing but it is the time to reach its peak value. So this is the peak time and delay time means it is the time to reach its 50% of energy. So this is peak delay time and this settling time is high in general. So this is the all about of second order time response of second order system for a stable board. Thank you.